Hi. Hello. Uh, I wanted to try something new and do a voiceover for this one and, and see if that was something that we liked. This one's a little bit, not a little bit, it's a lot a bit of a longer video than usual. I think this one was about uh, a four hour, three, three to four hour painting study and it ended up being about 20 minutes. Um, once I once I sped it up and I was hesitant to let it be any longer than that I tried to make it shorter but I was worried it would be a little bit too fast um, but I wanted to talk about this one and I wanted to try out voice um, I know this channel is is ludicrously small right now so anyone who is here or anyone who stops by if they want to offer feedback if this is something that they like they can they can let me know um, but about the painting, this was a study. It was a study that I did to try and tackle a lighting scheme that I really wanted to utilize in a future piece. And I never really approached it beyond a uh, rough sketch, and I'll, I'll pop that in here, probably right here on the, on the left side of the screen. Um, because I couldn't really wrap my head around it. I wanted to do like a neon lighting scheme that lit a dark room and was illuminated from an open sign and even though i know critically on a, on a technical level all i really need to think about is color blocking for whatever reason when i applied it to a subject i, I couldn't wrap my brain around the how the temperature of the color would interact and play um, even in my brain, when I tried to go through the process of, of painting something mentally, it just got really muddy, despite knowing what the approach was supposed to be. Um, so that's what this, this painting really was. I, I wanted to kind of go a little bit hard mode for me and do a cross lighting, which I think ended up being more complex, but I can wrap my head around it now. Can you hear my little dog? That's Bear. He's crying in the background. Hi, buddy. And it, it, it was successful. I, I don't think the painting itself was successful, but I think what I got out of it was. I feel like I can probably approach uh, the painting that I wanted to do now. Um, so up until this point, I was just laying in some basic washes to try and, and get that schematic in and here I think I started putting in some of my darker values because again I just couldn't wrap my head around the context of the piece with that high chroma high saturation color without some of those grounding dark features. Um, so I built this one up kind of timidly and slowly in a lot of washes because I just wasn't quite sure what approach I needed to do and I, I think that that shows and adding in these kind of darker shapes recontextualized the painting a little bit in a way that I was better able to understand, um, which was was great. I think it helped a lot. I think it also really contributed to a mistake that I made later on that I'll, I'll point out when it, when it gets there. But otherwise it was just slow layering and um, this painting really went through an ugly stage for a really long time, I think. It, it really helped me with my nervousness of painting on camera, which is great. I feel better about that. Um, but things were looking a little muddy here, and if you can see with that darker... What, what should have happened was I should have laid in my bright pink on the left side of the face, not touched it, and retained that as one big painted out light shape, which is something that I end up going back in to redo and gouache. Which, thank goodness for that. Thank goodness for gouache. It's such a pal and a really great fallback for me when I heck it up with watercolor. Um, but it also means that sometimes I spend more time problem solving instead of planning and exploring the color and value relationships that I should have probably resolved before I started. And that time spent problem solving is really what happened here. I started to fall back into one of my problem areas as an artist where instead of retaining that 
big, broad, light shape with the pink that I previously mentioned, I really fudged up my values by thinking of color as it was applied to form, uh, like in this case to describe the face, instead of thinking of it as a way to describe the modifier. And in this case, the modifier would be the dramatic lighting source or the lighting scheme or just the light. And honestly, it was a really great mistake to make because it was a mistake that I make a lot. And it was the thing that really prevented me from wrapping my head around this and being forced to catch it and work through it and unwrap and rewrap everything back up forced me to get to where I wanted to go with this eventually, even though I hit this little rocky roadblock at the start um, by over-rendering. I hope that makes sense. Maybe it makes more sense if you also share that same pitfall and you can let me know if you do. It's taken me a long time to get through this one. It's a similar mistake I make over and over and over again. and. Um, have really only started seriously trying to work through since I made comics and had to start putting images and illustrations into an atmosphere. And I guess sometimes it just takes practice and, and critical thinking and, and time, but I'd love to hear how you are working or have worked through that or maybe a different art weakness that you have. Um, I don't know, as I'm kind of working through mine live for you here now. I do think that even with those mistakes, there were a couple cool things that did happen with this rendering that did get a little lost later on when I reassessed my light and my goals for this piece. Um, like I do think that little pop of, of bounce light pink in the ear and the eye was was pretty on, on goal and I lost that a little later when I added color and, and that's... Okay, I think that was an okay sacrifice to make as I went way too dark with the pink that you, you see me doing here now. And this was about where I started to go in with that gouache and, and try to put in that secondary light source that got really, really muddy by emphasizing all of the blues. Um, and I really knocked back a lot of the darks in doing this to bring a lot of my values back to a middle range which I think was necessary. I needed to stop and take a step back and pop those darks back in at the end and work with my middle values to understand what the light was doing and to make sure that the light wasn't getting too dark, which was the issue I was having before, um, especially because I was about ready to work with orange and. You'll see in a minute when I pop that orange in that I really simplify all of that rendering that I just did and I knocked it back into one shape um, because red is an inherently really deep valued color. If you put a black and white filter over it, it's really deceptive how dark it actually is. And so for that to be my light shape or lighting schematic color, um, and have it be that dark just didn't make sense. So kind of knocking back that rendering helped me to put those colors into a better value context to proceed with the painting. And even though I liked some of the rendering that I had before, I felt like where this went from this point forward was a lot more successful to what I was trying to figure out. And I think I did a pretty okay job of it. I can do better. But that's what next time is for, for the painting that I did this for. And I'm, I'm happy with where it went at this point forward, even though it isn't a perfect painting and even though it definitely does still feel like a study to me. And I do come back later to pop those darks back in once I have the basic lighting that I established. For whatever reason, the camera has a really hard time picking it up. Um, I'm not sure why. I did include a picture at the end of this video that kind of gives a better better scope of what it looks like in person with how dark those darks actually get. I think just the brightness of the cobalt teal and the cadmium orange really 
blew out all of the dark and maybe the camera just focuses on that a little bit more um, but they do come back in and it, it really grounded the painting especially once I started adding those sort of atmospheric clouds and little ash pieces and, and tendrils to try and unify it all as a piece even though it's a study I, I wanted it to feel grounded in an atmosphere I didn't want it to be just a floating figure so yeah I, I think that's all I have to say for that one. That that felt long. Was was that long? You can let me know. Um, I've, I've been really honestly hesitant to do any kind of voice stuff in video just because this platform has just such a dense population of really phenomenal and incredible artists that at the level I'm at where I feel like I have so much to learn, I feel like there's very little insight that I could offer here that would be new or really worth sharing. But at the same time, I've been really reassessing how I want to use social media this year and moving away from focusing on audience building and more towards just being part of a community. And the voice stuff seems like a good way to do that and to foster that, to have some genuine conversations and a genuine sense of community. And especially in my little space here where it feels like, because it's so small, a, a fresh slate to be able to do that and, and focus on that. So you can let me know, and in the meantime, enjoy the rest of the painting and some tunes. Thanks for watching.